Hello, Bobcats. Mrs. Wilhite again. We're still in fifth grade math, but we are now going to start chapter two, and we're in lesson three of chapter two. It's dealing with powers and exponents. It is a fifth grade standard, something you're required to learn in this grade. I'm hoping that at the end of the lesson, you'll be able to use powers and exponents in expressions. So again, I'm hoping that you'll have powers and you'll also have exponents to help you solve expressions. There's that question, why, Mrs. Wahai, why are we spending time on this? Why are we learning this today? Well, we know it's a fifth grade standard. We know that you're required to learn it. But the main idea here is efficiency. And efficiency means being able to do something quickly, not wasting time. And so I think using powers and using exponents will help you solve math problems quicker. So hopefully you'll see that with the expressions that we use today, that the strategies we go over will help you become someone who solves math problems quicker. All right, prior knowledge, what do you already know about factors? Well, I know factors are numbers, right? They're digits that help us get another number through multiplication. So if I think about the number 12, 12 has some factors. 1 times 12 equals 12. So 1 and 12 are factors. 3 times 4 is also 12. So 3 and 4 are factors of 12. We also have 2 times 6. So if I look at the number 12, it actually has 6 factors. So from my experience, I know factors are numbers we use to multiply to get another number. So if we look at another number, this time let's look at the number 19. What are some factors of 19? Well, 1 times 19 equals 19, and that's it. So 19 has only two factors. Okay, something else is the word composite and the word prime. Well, composite numbers have more than two factors, so that's like 12. 12 actually has six factors, so 12 is a composite number. Prime is when you have only two factors, one and itself. So an example would be 19. 19 is a prime number. Another example of a prime number would be the number 11. The only way to make 11 is 1 times 11. It has exactly two factors. Another example of a composite number would be the number 6. And the reason why 6 is composite is you can do 1 times 6 and you could do 2 times 3. It has four factors. So from my experience, I know prime numbers have two factors. Composite numbers have more than two factors. And factors are the numbers we use when we multiply to give you the value you're seeking. All right, here are those steps that are going to help us today. Step one, find the product of a number. Well, product, I know in math, means multiplication or to multiply, the answer to a multiplication problem. So step one, find the product. So I'm probably going to use factors when multiplying. So find the product. Step two, write each power using an exponent. So there's that word exponent. So I'm going to use the product in step one to write the exponent power, okay? Step three, find the value. So I'm going to solve. And finally, step four, that one that's so valuable, is it reasonable? Does my answer make sense? So one, find the product of the factors. Two, write each power using that little exponent. Solve, find the value, and then finally, of course, check and see if it's reasonable. Let's see these steps in action. All right, example one, math in my world. The number of calories in six pancakes can be written as 10 to the third power. Write 10 to the third power as a product of the same factor. Then find the value. Okay, well, step one is I'm going to find the product of the same factor. Okay, and that's done for us right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break down the number that's given. And I'm going to write it as a product of the same factor. That exponent, that tiny 3, tells me that I have 3 of the number 10. And product is when we multiply. So 10 times 10 times 10. That's the product of the same factor. Step 2. Write it using a exponent. So I'm going to write the power 
as an exponent. Luckily, it's done for us in the problem, but it's 10 to the third power. There's three of them. Okay, step three, we'll find the value. 10 times 10, I know, is 100. And then 100 times 10 is 1,000. So the value of 10 to the third power is 1,000. Okay, and it's six pancakes have 1,000 calories. Step four, is it reasonable? Well, does 10 to the third power really equal 1,000? Well, I can see here that 10 times 10 times 10 does give me the value of 1,000. I have the correct answer. So I want to talk a second about that word powers. When we look at an exponent, which is that little tiny digit next to the larger base, the base number, that 5 here, is the exponent. And we would pronounce this as 2 to the 5th power. Okay, 3 is the base here. 2 is the exponent, and we would pronounce this as 3 to the second power, or 3 squared. It's given a special name if it's to the second power or the third power. Now if we look at 10 to the third power, 3 is the exponent, 10 is the base. You could say 10 to the third power or 10 cubed because it has that special name. So again, it has a base, like 5 is the base. 5 to the 4th power, and the 4 is the exponent. Okay, the math in my world, right, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 using an exponent. Well, I know that the base of this problem is 3. I'm dealing with the number 3. Since 3 is used as a factor 4 times, 1, 2, 3, 4, the exponent is the number 4. Write it as a power. Okay, well, that's third to the fourth power. Again, three is the base, four is the exponent, and it's pronounced three to the fourth power. Okay, moving into guided practice, write four times four times four times four using an exponent. Again, the base is four. We're dealing with the digit four. Since four is used as a factor, well, it has one, two, three, four factors, so four times, the exponent is also four. So you could write this as four times four times four times four, but again, this lesson is all about efficiency, making it quicker. Instead of writing four times four times four times four, it is faster to write four to the fourth power. All right, independent practice. It looks like they have already written the product of the factors. So if we look at the directions, it says write each product using an exponent. So they want us to look at these factors that are written here and write it using an exponent. Okay, well, the base is 10. And how many 10s do I have? How many factors? One, there's two of them. So I know the exponent is a two. So I could say 10 to the second power or 10 squared because it has that special name. Okay, now if I look at problem three, I have the number eight as my base, and there's one, two, three, four. So I can say eight to the fourth power. So four is my exponent, and eight is my base. Now if I move on to problem four, I have three as the base, and how many of those do I have? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So three to the sixth power. 6 is the exponent, 3 is the base. Problem 5 is dealing with the number 5 as the base, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them. So 5 to the 5th power. And number 6, 9 is the base, and there's 4 of them, so 9 to the 4th power. And number 7, I'm dealing with 1 is the base, and if I look, there's five of them. So five is the exponent, one to the fifth power. This is reasonable because I counted how many of them there were and used that as my power, my exponent. And I made sure my base was the actual number that was listed in factors. And finally, I did not have to find the value. Sometimes the directions, the instructions will say find the value, but 
in these certain problems, they're just asking for us to write it as an, using that exponent. So I know this is reasonable because I wrote each of the answers using that exponent that they asked. All right, I'm still in independent practice. Now I'm going to write each power as a product of the same factor and find the value. So they're asking me for two things. I have to write them as the same factor and then also find the value. Well, 10 is the base, so I'm gonna have 10 as my number. And how many factors of 10? Well, it tells me the exponent is four. So I need to write it four times. So 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. This is the product of the same factor. I now need to actually find the value to solve. What is 10 times 10? Well, that's 100. And then 100 times 10 is 1,000. And then I know 1,000 times 10 is equal to 10,000. So I can go ahead and write my value at the end. So that equals 10,000. Is it reasonable? Well, I have the same factor written. I also have the actual value, so I know I have the right answer. Let's move on to problem 9. Well, 3 is the base, so I have to write 3 as the same factor. There's 2 of them. That exponent tells me that there's just 2, or 3 squared. So I should have put a 3 here. So now that I have it written as the same factor, I can find the value. Well, I know 3 times 3 is 9. I can go ahead and move on. This number, number 10, has a 9 as the base. 9 cubed, or 9 to the third power. So this is 9 as the product of the same factor, because that 3 tells me to write it 3 times. So then the last part is to actually find the value. Well, I know 9 times 9 is 81. So if I do 81 times 9, I'll have the value. Well, and that's 729. So I have the product of the same factor, 9 cubed, 9 times 9 times 9, and the value is 729. It's reasonable. All right, number 11, 6 to the fifth power. So I need to write 6 with 5 factors because that exponent tells me to write it out 5 times. The next part says find the value. Well, I know 6 times 6 is 36. So if I multiply 6 times 6, 36 times the 6, that's going to give me 216, and sometimes I like to cross it off, just saying I'm done with you, I've already found you, I'm ready to move on to the next one. It helps keep me organized. I can do 216 times 6, and then I, I get 1,296. I can go ahead and cross off that. I still need to multiply 6 one more time to find the value because I need to multiply it the 6 five times. So if I multiply 1,296 times that final 6, I get my answer. And I know that the answer is 7,776. Okay, that last step, is it reasonable? Well, if I look back at the directions, it says the product of the same factor, I have done that. And then finally to find the value, I have found the value on all of them. I can go ahead and move on. All right, problem solving. A single tusk that weighed just over two to the eighth pounds from an African elephant is the largest tooth ever recorded from any modern animal. About how many pounds did the tusk weigh? Well, here's that question mark. I better underline how much did it weigh. Okay, well, I know from the problem, something I understand is that it weighed 2 to the 8th power. Well, I can go ahead and write that as the product of its own factors. So I have 2, and I'm going to write that 8 times because I have to multiply it 8 times. All right, so I know that 2 to the 8th power has 2 times 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 2. So if I multiply all of those 2s, I should have the value or the weight of that actual tooth. Well, I know 2 times 2 is 4. Again, I like to cross it off as I go so I can keep track of things. 4 times 2 is 8. And then 8 times 2, well, that's 16. And I also know that 16 times 2 is 
32, so I can cross that off and put 32. And then I have to do 32 times 2, and that gives me 64. So I'm going to cross off that one and put 64. I still need to multiply times 2, and I get 128. Cross that off, keep myself organized. Now if I multiply 128 times 2, then I should have the value or the weight of that actual tooth. 256 pounds. I want to make sure to label my answer. I determined the answer is 256 pounds. This is reasonable because if I look at the problem, it tells me that it weighed 2 to the 8th power. Well, I have 2 written 8 times. And if I multiplied 2 times itself, eight times, I will get the answer 256 pounds. I know that I have the right answer. All right, here's the next one. It says, which is greater, three to the fifth power or five to the third power or five cubed? Explain your reasoning. Well, the first thing I have to do is solve. And I know that three to the fifth power is three times three times three times three times three. I also know that 5 to the third power is 5 times 5 times 5. So if I solve these two, then I should know if the value of one of them is larger than the other value. All right, well, I can see. I understand the answer is 3 to the fifth power is greater, is larger in value. I can explain this, or I know it's reasonable because... 3 times 3 is 9, I'm going to cross it off, 9 times 3 is 27, 27 times 3 is 81, and then 81 times 3 gives me my answer, 243. 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 5 is 125. Well, I know 243 is greater than 125, so that must mean that 3 to the 5th power is greater. All right, I know some of you are like, yes, it's the last slide. It is. And I want you to think before you start working on that workbook or using that digital format of the independent problems, what did you learn today? Well, in summary, today I learned efficiency with exponents. When you use that little exponent to show powers of numbers, it's much faster than writing all the factors. Instead of writing 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, it's much quicker to do 3 to the fourth power. Again, hopefully these exponents, these powers will help you get faster in your math, and thank you so much for listening.